Greetings, Union Hill, and whoever may be listening online. Just to remind you, uh, the elders are at the church building on Sunday morning. If you need prayer, if you need help with the Lord's Supper from 9 until 10 o'clock, they're available. So thank uh, the elders. Pray for them. If you're at your home listening to this, uh, there may have been a, a few more songs added to try to aid your worship this morning. You can use them as you please. Uh, you can sing Ferris Lord Jesus or sing along with Ferris Lord Jesus before you take communion and pray with your family. You can listen to My Hope is Built on Nothing Less and listen to this sermon and close out to, uh, to singing together uh, This Is My Father's World. But use these and other tools that you find often and on this Lord's Day. Let's all try to praise and worship his name. Our text is 1 Corinthians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. We'll begin reading in verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning in verse 14. I'll give you a minute to get your Bibles there as we read God's word together. 1 Corinthians 4, beginning in verse 14. I do not write these things to make you ashamed, but to admonish you as my beloved children. For though you have countless guides or instructors in Christ, you do not have many fathers, for I became your father in Christ Jesus through the gospel. I urge you then, be imitators of me. That is why I sent you Timothy, my beloved and faithful child in the Lord, to remind you of my ways in Christ, as I teach them everywhere in every church. Some are arrogant, as though I were not coming to you. But I will come soon, if the Lord wills, and I will find out not the talk of these arrogant people, but their power. For the kingdom of God does not consist in talk, but in power. What do you wish? Shall I come to you with a rod? or with love in a spirit of gentleness. A Christian is a living being. A Christian is alive. And one of the characteristics of a living thing is that it has the ability to reproduce. It has the ability to reproduce. That was a phrase that I read when I was studying this text, and it really stuck with me. One of the characteristics of a living Christian is their ability to reproduce to reproduce their faith, their life, their Christian values within the life of another. That a Christian be able to reproduce Christianity in someone else. That other people's lives start to look like your life because your life looks like Christ. My wife and I have two kids, 10-year-old daughter, 8-year-old son, and there are certain traits within their lives that they got from me. If they're bad traits, then they obviously got them from me. If they're good, then obviously they got them from my wife. And I'm not just talking about my daughter looking like me or my son getting my genetic predisposition for doing crazy things and bouncing off walls. My kids have reproduced a lot of the habits and the behaviors they have seen in me, that they have seen in my wife over the years, that they have seen us live over the years. They love music. They love being outside. They love the church, they love their friends and family, they love people. There are things being reproduced in them that they have seen and observed and imitated in our lives. Concepts and doctrines they don't even know how to define yet. They don't even know what they are, but they're already doing them and speaking them and living them out. They've been reproduced in the lives of my children because they've seen those things in me. If you are a living Christian, then you ought to be a person that has influenced the life of another person, taught your Christianity to someone else, taught a life of submission to Jesus to someone else, taught your faith, your life, your behavior to someone else. Your life has rubbed off on someone else. You ought to be a spiritual father or mother at some point. And if you are not yet, then that ought to be a goal of yours spiritually to have a person that you have influenced who has reproduced your faith because you imitate Christ. That's what Paul did. Be imitators of me. I urge you. And it really nails me in my heart when I think and examine and ask, and it should do the same to you. Have I been able to reproduce my faith in Christ, my life in Christ, my values in Christ? Have I been able to reproduce those within the life of another person? Have I been a spiritual mother or father to anyone else? And just like becoming a, a physical parent, you never forget those you have become so close to as sons and daughters in the faith. 
There are memories I have at Union Hill of youth retreats, youth weekends, summer internships, where young people have opened up, confessed their fears, their sins, their faults, their frustrations. There are Bible classes where things are said by those that uh, have taught for, for a decade and a half that, that, that have been taken kind of under my wing. And what they say makes me proud because of how far they have come, how much they have grown in their spiritual maturity. You never forget watching your spiritual sons and daughters grow up. They are like children to you. And Paul, as he is talking to the Corinthian church, calls them his beloved children. He says that he became their father through the gospel, chapter 4, verse 15. And what Paul taught them as a father in doctrine, in conduct, in activity, it wasn't just instruction and it wasn't just talk. They could see the words, they could see the teachings within his life, and he urged them to be imitators of him, imitators of his life, imitators of his attributes, because they come from Christ. And Paul reproduced his faith in the lives of others who he taught. He was a living example of what to do, what to say, how to respond. Uh, when it came to the world, he was a living example of faith. And his faith was reproduced in the lives of others. The question you have to answer is the same. Has your faith done that? Has it reproduced in the life of another person? And this illustration Paul is using of being their spiritual father, begetting them in the faith goes deeper and brings this into focus. I have been present for the conversion of people in my life. There have been times that I've been used as the instrument through which the Word of God has cut them to the heart, the Spirit of God convicting them, and I've seen people come from the darkness of sin to the saving and transforming life and light of Jesus Christ. I have been present to see God work in His operation. I have been a teacher, an instrument through which salvation has been taught, but there are few people who I would go so far as to say they were sons or daughters in the faith to me. Over the last 15 years at Union Hill, I've been able to influence, this is a scary thought, and teach and guide several of the young people here who are now adults and have families and babies of their own now. And there are those who I've, I've spent hundreds of Sundays and Wednesdays with and hundreds of classes with, and I've spent hours upon hours with them, and I look at them like a father looks at his kids. I have a unique relationship with those who I have tried to raise in the faith over the last 15 years at Union Hill, the same way that the elders can look back over their lifetime and see the sons and the daughters of faith they have helped to raise. And I hope that the faith and the behavior and life I have in Christ has been reproduced in those spiritual children. I hope they've imitated me as I've imitated Christ. And Paul even brings out the difference in the relationship when it comes to our text of simply being an instructor and being someone's spiritual father, spiritual parent. Paul says, though you have countless instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers. For I became your father in Christ Jesus through the teaching of the gospel. There was a closer bond that Paul had, a more intimate connection than if he was just an instructor. There are spiritual educators and teachers and instructors that give you truths. And then there are spiritual parents. Education is a little different these days compared to the Greco-Roman culture. In ancient Greece, there were instructors. The word here in this text is where we get the term pedagogy. And it's the teaching and leading of children. And these ancient instructors were basically hired servants or hired slaves who were placed in a home to lead and guide and take care of children. This instructor, this pedagogy, was with the children, constantly keeping them, teaching them, caring for them, but they were paid indentured guardians of the children of the house. And though the house may have multiple teachers and multiple instructors hired throughout the, the young life of that family, that house only had one, one father who bore those children, one father who provided for those children, who were in close relationship with those kids. There is a difference in relationship and in closeness between an instructor who is simply hired to teach and a father who cares for his children, is always concerned about his children, would lay down his life for his children. As a father, I worry about my kids, probably more than I should worry about my kids. I think about the stuff that they're gonna have to deal with later on. They're not even there yet. I think about the temptations that they are going to face. And it's gonna be hard for me to let go a little more my parents let me loose on a four-wheeler in the sleepy community of New Providence, Kentucky, 
and now we keep the road hot going from creek to gravel pit to farm to this trail to that trail going and playing basketball at this place or that place my parents just wanted to know where i was going who i was with and told me when to be home no phones no calls no texts my kids are getting to that age where i was when i made my first trek by myself and i find myself worrying about the day they start riding off by themselves on their bikes or their four wheelers as you just heard a while ago not because of them i'm not i'm not scared for them i'm not scared because they know what is right and wrong but because of the dangers of the world around them that they are carefree and oblivious to right now because as a father you want to protect your children. You want to shelter them from harm. You want to watch over them, rescue them from every possible danger. And you want to know that you have taught them what they need to know. The relationship I have to my kids as their father is more than just an instructing role. It's more than just teaching, okay? The pedagogy was done when the training was complete. The teacher in Greco-Roman times was done when the training and instruction was complete. You're never done with being a spiritual father. You're never done with being a physical father. And I will get intense with my kids about things that I know will harm them, things that will be dangerous to them. I get the dad face, right? That stern face that you hated to see when you were a kid. I get that face now and I'll point my finger and I'll raise my voice and I'll tell them exactly what they need to know. But like Paul says in chapter 4 and verse 14, it's not to shame my kids and it's not to make them feel bad. He says, I don't write these things to make you feel ashamed, but to admonish you as my beloved children. That's why I admonish my kids. That's why I teach my kids and lecture my kids about things and truths they need to know because I'm their father. And it's not just about instruction. It's about lifelong intervention or lifelong care, lifelong admonition that if they need to know something, they can come to me and I will tell them. And that is what is characteristic of a physical parent, but also a spiritual parent. When you have someone who is like a spiritual father or mother to you, they will tell you exactly what you need to hear. They will tell you exactly where you've been doing good and where you've been, been doing wrong, where you need to be encouraged. They will teach you where you've been failing and they will teach you where you have been excelling. Parents admonish, they teach, they correct, and they're not doing it to shame the child or to run the child down. They're doing it because they love the child. They're doing it because they love you. My goal in ad admonition, my goal in correcting, my goal in disciplining or scolding or punishing my kids is to get them to understand the problem they just got into or the mistake they just made or the truth they just ignored to correct their course, not to run them off the road, not to run them down or not to beat them down into nothing. I want to see my kids spiritually, physically grow up towards godliness and obedience and this is where I need you, parents, grandparents, guardians of children, I need you to come real close and bring it towards the screen so I can talk to you for a second. Sometimes we're guilty of thinking that we can listen to some talk on whatever needs to be done, whatever we need to be doing with the Word of God, and we can listen to a sermon or to a class, and we think that we don't have any homework after it's done, after, after we you know, have finished with the video. You and I always have work to do, things to change, examinations of ourselves. So here is your homework. During this social distance, nobody going to physical services church time. You need to be showing and teaching the kids in your care, the ones in your house, the importance of Christ, the importance of his church, the importance of his worship, the importance of his day, the first day of the week. You as a parent have an opportunity and a responsibility to which you will give an account for giving an example and a lesson to your kids and right now, you can give them an example they will never forget. Being a father in the faith, a mother in the faith, it isn't just about teaching things. It's not just about saying things. It's not just about instructing things. It's not just about correcting. It's about you living the principles of Jesus Christ in front of your children. It's about setting the pattern for them to follow to Christ. You are like John the Baptist, blazing a trail for your children to follow to Jesus. And I hope you're doing that today as you're worshiping, as you're together, 
And I hope you're doing that in everyday behavior. Are you reproducing the faith that you have in Christ?